Today, I have a wonderful guest for you, Jennifer Jacobs, who is the owner of Wandering Whisk Bake Shop right here in Pinellas Park. Now, she started this business about six years ago out of her mom's kitchen and now has a physical location, storefront location, where she creates custom order cakes, cookies, and other pastries for customers. Her story is something that just kind of stood out to me. Her approach to her business, her approach to life, and the way that she goes about it is something that uh, I think is inspiring, and I think that we can all learn a lot from. So I hope you enjoy this podcast, and I hope you enjoy meeting Jennifer. And be sure to check out her next pop-up events. Welcome to another episode of Palm Harbor Local. I'm your host, Florida native and real estate ninja, Donnie Hathaway. You know, I started this podcast because I'm extremely passionate about connecting you with the people and the local businesses that make Palm Harbor so special. Palm Harbor, Florida is a great place to live, work, and play. It has everything you could dream of, from the food, the outdoors, the lifestyle, to the people in the community. I wanted to create a podcast that connected the community and inspired everyone to live better. To join this community and stay up to date on all things Palm Harbor, visit my website, it's palmharborlocal.com, and sign up there to join the locals. And remember, together, we keep Palm Harbor local. So welcome, Jennifer. Thank you for joining the podcast today. I am I'm excited to learn more about your business. Thank you. Yeah, I've been following you on Instagram for a while, so I'm excited to join the podcast today. Sweet. Um, so your business is the Wandering Whisk Bake Shop. Why don't we start there and kind of tell everybody what that is and kind of how that came about? Yeah, so I'm Jennifer Jacobs. I own Wandering Whisk Bake Shop. We're located in Pinellas Park down near St. Pete. We're an easy drive from the Palm Harbor Clearwater area straight down US 19. And we are a custom order bake shop. So we specialize in colorful buttercream cakes and desserts made from scratch. So we're a little different than your standard bakery where you would walk in and maybe get a pastry and a coffee and sit and enjoy some time there. We are open by appointment only. So what that means is you would place an order for a birthday cake or desserts for your office or a corporate event or you're getting married and you need a wedding cake. We specialize in all different types of events. But we also open up to the public on um, kind of like a monthly basis during the spring and the fall seasons, and we call those pop-ups. So it's essentially where you can come into the bakery, you can buy items individually, and that's the time where we do open our doors to the public. But the pop-ups have kind of turned into something way more than I ever thought they would be. People are now camping out in front of the bakery, sometimes two to three hours before we open. Yeah, they're bringing lawn chairs and coffee and girls are bringing their book clubs and sitting outside and reading at 7 a.m. before we open. So it's it's really amazing. So people come to these pop ups and the pop ups are really neat because all of the menus I create for those are really exclusive to that specific day. So we Mm. might have a fall pop up or we had uh, a fun in the sun one in the springtime and everything was surrounded, you know, about um, like different kinds of drinks that you would have by the pool and summery flavors. And so each menu is really carefully curated by me. So we do, yeah, the custom orders, we do the pop ups and then we also teach classes at the bakery, which is really fun, too. Cool, cool. So the the pop ups, like how did that start? And like, did you did you ever want to open up a, a bakery that was open up, you know, nine mm-hmm. to five, let's say, or did you always want to do like custom orders? Well, I started off thinking I was going to open a bakery, like a walk in bakery where people could come in, yeah. and, you know, come in on a daily basis. And then I saw some other bakers I knew around the country and I, I saw them doing this custom order thing. And I thought, huh, that's really fascinating because I've always really liked the artistic aspect of designing not only beautiful cakes, but getting really creative with different kinds of desserts mm-hmm. and the pressure of having a storefront that was open each day and thinking about staffing and how much are you going to waste if people don't come in that day and Mm -hmm. um, just just the craziness of running a business that's open on a daily basis is so different than what I do where I always say my bakery is my art studio and I go in each day I know exactly what I'm making Um, everything is made to order so I don't waste anything but it's really nice because it's quiet I can work and I can really hone in on the details of each order. Yeah. So instead of focusing on like, okay, I need X amount of this cookie, I need X amount of this cake, you're just focusing on 
like what your orders are yeah, and being creative. Exactly. And so that's what I really like. And then a lot of the clients that come to me, I have a ton of repeat business. Cool. I mean, I have people that I did their wedding three years ago and now they're having their second child and I've done the gender reveal and I've done the oh, baby sweet. shower and the birthdays. And so a lot of families have really included me into all of their celebrations. But yeah, so a lot of the clients really trust me with the creativity part of it. And they allow me to, you know, they want a birthday cake and they say, hey, I want a birthday cake for my daughter. We've seen your work. And I like to think that my work really speaks for itself. And I do my best work when people allow me to be creative. Yeah. 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 Because it's your your ideas, your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. It's like telling an artist, you know, commissioning a painting from an artist and telling them, well, I want this exact painting. Right. Well, the artist isn't going to be quite as creative as, you know, if you give them a little bit of creative freedom. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So where did, where did baking start for you? Is this something you've been always been doing or? Yeah. So baking for me started quite young. My mom and I would bake. We baked quite often, but really around the holidays, uh, we're Romanian and she had a lot of recipes that were passed down to her that her and I would always bake around the holidays. But then growing up, my friends in high school, uh, we actually kind of joke, we used to make funfetti cake for our teachers for their birthdays. And I think that was kind of our way to oh, sucking up to our high school <laughs> teachers. It didn't really help with our grades, but you know, <laughs> but we thought it was kind of a fun thing. So yeah. Um, yeah, so I've always enjoyed baking, but I went to school, I went to UCF to work uh, in the music industry. And so I graduated from college, I moved to New York, I worked in the music industry. And then uh, I did that for a couple years. And then I moved back to Florida and worked as a TV producer at HSN and baked in all of during that time. I was always baking, but I was baking to relieve the stress of those jobs, Mm. which was really kind of ironic. And now I do it as a full time job. But I'm not baking now to relieve the stress. I'm baking now because it's my passion. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Did you ever want to um, own your own business like growing up? Did you ever like I'm going to be a baker? Like, was that ever a thought? No. I never, never, I never thought I would own a business. I like to think I've always been a leader and very entrepreneurial in my mindset. Yeah. But no, I mean, if you asked me in high school, would you ever own a business? I don't think that was ever a thought in my mind. I also didn't grow up in a family that with people that had owned like family that had owned businesses. So it was never really instilled in me like, oh, you can own a business. I mean, my family is incredibly supportive, but it just wasn't presented to me as an this option, is like an this option. Is, yeah. 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 It was go to school. It was go to school and find a job, but find a job you're passionate about Right. because my family all, they all work in careers that they're really passionate about. So that was really big. But, um, yeah, no, I, being my own boss has been incredible. I have to say, Yeah. but I also think being a business owner, it takes a certain type of person. You have to be very Mm self-motivated and very organized. And there's a lot of things that come with it. I don't think everyone's made to run a sure. business. Right. right, right. Yep, yeah. I would agree with that. What do you, what do you enjoy the most about being, being your own boss? Um, I'm very good at time management. And so I really like each week I have a schedule. And I know exactly when I'm, when I'm working and when I'm going to be focused. And then I also allow myself that time outside of work to spend with family and friends, because mm-hmm. when you work in a creative job, I think that downtime is so important because I find myself, especially after like the holiday season, I'm so burnt out. I've been working so much. And then I come back and if I didn't take any downtime, it's going to be hard for me to start coming up with new ideas and being creative again. So I think the fact that I can kind of dictate my own schedule. And then also I'm at the point now where I only take on orders and events of things that I really think I'm going to be good at and enjoy. Mm -hmm. I don't say yes to everything because there's certain things that, they don't bring me happiness when I make them. And so I've gotten to the point where when I first started the business, I would do anything. I mean, anything anyone wanted me to make, I was like, sure, I'll figure it out. But now I really know what my style is and uh, what I enjoy doing the most. Yeah. Do you think every business owner kind of has to go through that transition of like in the beginning, I I take on everything. I try a bunch of new things and then I kind of find my niche or kind of figure out my my path. I think most people that own a business go through that. Yes. Because at the beginning you might say, Oh, well, someone I follow on Instagram, they have a similar kind of business and they're doing this. So I should be doing that. Yeah. And then you start doing it yourself. Like for me, I don't really I don't do cake pops and I don't really make cupcakes. Those are just not my thing. I think they're overdone in the market. I think you can go to a lot of places in the area and buy a cupcake. You're not going to find a cupcake in my shop. So 
I think that when you start a business, it's really important to do that trial and error and realize you don't have to do everything. That's what I was always told by other people is be creative, do something unique and just do something to stand out in the community. I mean, there's a lot of bakeries in this area, but I Mm -hmm. like to think that what I do really stands out. Yeah. And I think the key to that, right, is like finding what it is you're passionate about or finding it is what it is you enjoy doing the most. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, so going back to like something you just said about time management and like, I, I've had a couple of conversations recently about time management and like that being extremely important. Mm-hmm. And, and I would agree like for a business owner, like when you're creating your own schedule, like that's probably like one of the hardest things to do because yeah. you have that freedom and, but it's one of the most important things you're going to do as a business owner. So what yeah. are some tips or what are, what is something that you've done that that's worked for you to going to help you in that, in that category? What's up, Palm Harbor? It's your host, Donnie Hathaway. If you are looking to stay up to date with all things Palm Harbor, then visit my website. It's palmharborlocal.com. Super simple. You can sign up there, join the locals, where I'll be sharing more information on local events, local history, and what's happening in Palm Harbor. You know, I really want to create and add more value to you as a listener for spending your valuable time tuning into my podcast. So join me there, keep listening, and remember, together, we keep Palm Harbor local. Well, for me, I still like a good routine. I'm a routine person. Yeah. I kind of know each week I was telling Donnie, we were talking about, you know, our work schedules and how it's hard when you own a business. But I said each week on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, those are kind of my baking days. Like I know I'm going to go in, I'm going to get organized for the week on Tuesday. Um, I I like to look ahead to the following week as well to see what's coming up. And then Thursdays and Fridays, I'm really prepping for the weekend. But I think it's important with time management. You need to you need to come up with a routine. I think routine is just super important. And then making lists of things mm. and working out, working in advance. So not just looking at what's coming up this week, but I'm looking, I'm always looking six months out just to kind of see what's happening. And um, yeah, I mean, I just think being detailed, I'm super detailed. And I just think that is so important to always be, always have a planner. I have a paper planner. I'm not like a Google calendar girl. (laughs) I like having a physical planner in front of me so I can always see what's going on. Yeah. So you write down like, so you don't use a Google calendar at all. Everything is in the physical planner. Yeah. I mean, I use technology when I need to. I mean, of course, like social media, email and all that, but I've always had a planner and I like to physically sit down when I'm, you know, emailing people back about wedding inquiries and parties and all of that. I like to look at the calendar and physically write out, you know, what I'm doing. And yeah. that's just, but that's what works for me. You know, some people use all these fancy programs and that's fine if that works for you. But yeah. I think each person does it a different way. And that's another thing is you don't have to do it the same as everyone else. Right. So, yep. yeah, I think, yeah, for me, I like, I like writing on paper for some reason or yeah. like reading a same. book, right. Same. Instead of an audio book. Yes. Like I, I prefer those things. Um, so I, I, I get that. Right. But it's just, uh, and I've done, I've tried, I think, like you said, it's just trying, trying new things and figuring out what works for you. Cause I've yeah. tried like, you know, writing on an iPad and using that, but it's just not the same as like, well, yeah. And it's paper and no one is with you when you're sitting there planning your schedule. It's, it's right. your, it's whatever works for you. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. yeah I like that. Um, so you were on the, uh, on a food network competition, right? It was called yeah. holiday baking championship. It was. Yeah. It's so, in 2019. So my wife is, is a huge, um, food network consumer Oh, that's funny. and, <laughs> um, just watches all the shows. So we watch like, uh, is it Guy Fieri? Guy's grocery games. Yes. Great show. Great show. <laughs> Love it. Um, so tell me like what that experience is like. Yeah. So in 2019, I got an email from a casting director that they were casting actually the Halloween baking championship. Okay. And I said, you know, I love Halloween, but my stuff is not gory or scary enough. So I cannot be on Halloween baking. And he said, well, we're casting this other show. So holiday baking championship is a huge show. It's been on for years. It's okay. a series. Um, I've watched every season of it, but he said, we're doing this kind of one-off this summer and it's called uh, holiday baking championship Christmas in July. And so they were looking for bakers that could incorporate Christmas flavors, like holiday and Christmas season flavors, but with a summery spin. And I said, perfect. I've got it. Cause I said, Christmas in Florida, it could be 80 degrees. Yeah. You know, you're sometimes <laughs> you're swimming on Christmas. Right. So I went through the casting process and then flew out to LA and did that for about a week. I was out there and I had to make an ice cream cake, which oh, wow. people now ask, oh, do you make ice cream cakes? And I said, no, I absolutely <laughs> will not make you an ice cream cake. And we had to make ice cream cake 
from scratch, obviously the ice cream from scratch in a machine. We also had to bake the cake, but then the problem is you're doing it under a time limit. And so you have this cake that's still a little bit warm. You're putting the layers of ice cream in between the cake and then you're frosting it and trying to come up with this design in your head as you're making it because you don't you don't have planning time. I mean, you're really put on the spot. And so, yeah, so I'm watching the cake start to the ice cream start to melt. And but, you know, I like to think my cake turned out really great. So I am very proud of my parents on that. And it it was interesting because I was a TV producer formally and so yeah. to be on the other side of the camera was quite interesting so did you feel like the pressure of being on the other side of the camera or was it just like i'm good i got this i think i had the best outlook on it compared to the other contestants they yeah. were all quite nervous mm-hmm. and i'm around when i was at working at hsn i had cameras around all the time like i yeah. you know that was pretty normal to be in a studio with cameras and so that part of it didn't really put a lot of pressure on me the pressure for me was thinking okay because we're trying to make these recipes and we're trying to remember how to do everything. I mean, it's so fast paced and you're watching this clock tick down. Yeah. So I think it was just the pressure of everything happening so fast. Cause yeah. when I bake at my shop, I'm not under a time limit. Right. I mean, I know what needs to get done, but I can sit down and take a break or I can, you know, just and take a moment by the clock up yes. on the wall that's ticking yes. down. <laughs> and then meanwhile, Jesse Palmer was the host. And so he's oh, coming cool. around and talking to you and asking you questions. Yeah. And I think purposely trying to distract you a little bit. So yeah. yeah, it was, it was an awesome experience. That's cool. Would you yeah. do it again? Um, they've asked me, I don't, <laughs> it's a, some of the shows are a very big time commitment. They're about a month away. Oh, okay, okay. And so not to say I wouldn't do it again, because I would, but I think the timing would have to be right. Yep. Unfortunately, a lot of them cast very last minute. This show, uh, okay, I okay. didn't know until two weeks before I was I made oh, it, the wow. cast. Yeah, and so at the time, I was still building my shop. I was It was a few months before I opened, um, so it was actually perfect timing. But for me now to take a month away is, is quite challenging. Yeah, so, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, so what goes into, so going back to like your, your baking and like creating different recipes and mm-hmm. stuff, and you're always creating new um, designs and, and flavors and of course mm-hmm. all that what goes into creating that and um, and like what is it that you enjoy about creating these recipes yeah so for me I'm really big on developing recipes I just to me that is the epitome of creativity is coming up with a new idea and a new recipe and yes I mean cake designing cakes is a huge part of it and always trying to find new inspiration for designing cakes. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's not necessarily going on YouTube and watching other cake designers. It's just getting out in the world and traveling and seeing, you know, a beautiful fabric somewhere or um, flowers and picking up the colors of them and saying, oh, this color would be beautiful on a cake. Mm. And so actually the name Wandering Whisk came from my love of traveling and baking because a lot of the things, a lot of the flavors that I have on the menu are flavors that I've picked up while traveling. Um, Cookie butter is one of my favorite flavors. And in Belgium, there was a whole shop that had all this speculose cookie butter. And so I like to think a lot of the inspiration comes from traveling. Cool. But the recipes itself, I am one of those people that has a notepad in my phone and I'm constantly writing down ideas. And it always seems to be at like midnight. I have an idea for like a new cookie sandwich flavor or a new cream puff flavor. And um, I like to really do things out of the box. I don't want to make something that you're going to go into another bakery five miles away and pick up the same thing. Yeah. So most of my cake flavors, like I have a banana Nutella cake and I have a lemon lavender cake and a salted pretzel cake. And so really unique kind of flavors. Yeah. So and that's just all out of your head. Like this is just like (laughs) a lot of this idea. Yeah. A lot of it's trial and error. Some of the recipes are my family recipes. So it are things, you know, aunts and uncles or my mom or my grandparents that they passed down and I kind of tweaked the recipes over the years. Mm -hmm. So we have those recipes. And then some of the recipes have just been things. I think you get to this point. Well, I do. I know you get to this point when you, when you're baking for a long time, you know how to tweak a recipe without totally screwing it up. Okay. (laughs) You baking is very scientific in the way you have to have everything very specifically measured. Yeah. You can't necessarily say, oh, I'm going to throw a cup of orange juice in that cake and make it orange cake. I mean, it just doesn't work quite like that. Yeah. You have to know a lot about um, the technique behind each recipe and how it's going to how it's going to work when you're mixing it and baking it. But 
um, yeah, for me, I kind of, I kind of know how I can push the limits a little bit. Yeah. So did you, so creating these, these, um, different flavors, is it just kind of like trial and error? Like you said? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I get to the point now I work with my mom a lot and she'll say before one of these pop-up events, I'll have something new on the menu. She'll say, did you test that? Say, no, I know it's going to work. Oh, I mean, yeah. there are things now that I know 100% are going to work because in my head, I can just, I just know it's going to be fine. But then there are times where I do kind of test it out to yeah. see if it's going to work. And I like to think most of the things these days just... They just work out. Yeah, they just kind of work out. <laughs> yeah. When you do it long so, enough, it's just, you know what's going to taste good together, what flavor combos and all of yeah, that. So, yeah. yeah. Did you have did you have any formal training as far as baking or is it just like what you've done throughout your, your life? So I did not go to culinary school. I actually learned a lot of my baking through going to the Palm Harbor Library and getting Le Cordon Bleu textbooks. Really? And so I studied a lot of, that's how I learned a lot of the science of baking and how to formulate recipes because I think a lot of people can... They can enjoy baking because you can follow a recipe, but I think there's so much more behind being a good baker than just like being able to follow a recipe. You Mm -hmm. need to understand what baking soda does. What does creaming the butter and sugar together do? There's so many parts of it that really help create a recipe. But yeah, so I read a lot of books. I did watch a lot of videos. And then I actually went out to the San Francisco Baking Institute about six years ago. Okay. And I did this week-long intensive course. And that is where I really learned how to make um, all different kinds of cake bases and pastry creams and meringues. And we made probably at least 12 different kinds of cakes. And Mm -hmm. it was really incredible to be working in a, it was probably the first time I really worked in a commercial kitchen and really learned how to use commercial equipment and wore a chef's coat. And I mean, I felt like, wow, this is the big time. Yeah. And after that, that was truly the time where I went out there to kind of do this course and figure out, do I see myself doing this okay. as a career? And yeah. that was kind of that pivotal moment where I said, okay, I think I want to do this yeah. for real. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. And so then you come back and then you start baking and start selling. Um, yeah. I had sold a few things before that. Um, the business, it's really neat because I never set out to start this business. The bi- I always say the business kind of found me. Yeah. When I was at HSN, I started bringing in desserts just because I enjoyed baking and I would bring them in for my coworkers. And then these two guys, they are at the beginning of every story. These two guys bought these cookies <laughs> and they said, can we buy these red velvet cookie sandwiches from you that you make? And I said, sure. So they probably gave me 20 bucks. I brought them in these cookies The next day I went in and I said, hey, did your families enjoy the cookies? And they said, well, we actually ate all of them at work. Can we order another batch? So then I went home, I made another batch. And so that was, I always say that was my first sale. But it was just interesting because I never set out to start this business. And before I knew it, other people at the company were saying, oh, we heard you make these cookies. Can we buy them? Hey, I need a birthday cake. Hey, I need this. Mm. I'm getting married. Can you do this? And so that's when I decided to go out um, to that San Francisco Baking Institute and really learned a little bit more about cake making. And that was something that was very new to me. I had not made a lot of cakes in my, in my life. I mean, I made box cake mix growing up, but I really needed to learn like the basics of, yeah. um, Yeah. Baking and pastry and all of that. Yeah. So that kind of changed it and put Mm -hmm. you on this path of like, let's start the business. Yeah. So what was it like in the early days of starting the business? Like, what was that process like? And, and, um, did you ever see yourself like getting to this point? I always thought how neat it would be to open a shop. And I think I knew in my mind the whole time I would do it, but I had been told by so many people, oh, you'll never make it. There's too many bakeries. You'll never have enough money. You'll never find the right spot. I mean, just so many negative forces around me basically saying you'll never make it yeah and I was determined to say no I'm going to make it and I'm going to show them that I can do it yeah and I'm proud to say that I you know I went from being a home baker I started out in my mom's kitchen and then I moved to a small apartment in St. Pete and I was making wedding cakes on this small kitchen island and carrying them downstairs. And I mean, I just feel like I look back now and I can't believe I did all of that when I would come home from work and in this little apartment. And, um, yeah, as, as the years passed, I just started doing more and more. And I got to this point where I said, the baking business is taking over my home. 
I had cake boxes behind the TV. I had my entire kitchen was baking ingredients. I didn't even have cool. utensils for a real meal. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I got to the point where I said, OK, I think I'm ready to do this full time. And crazy enough, I actually got laid off my job. There was a huge layoff at HSN in 2018 and I got laid off and I actually kind of looked at that as a blessing because wow. it pushed me in, you know, finding a shop and kind of figuring out what was next. And then about a year to the day I got laid off, I opened my shop, which Crazy. was awesome. So you, um, so getting laid off kind of pushed you to kind of take that mm -hmm. next step and really like dive into the, yeah. Key. And not to say it, sometimes it all sounds like a dream. Everyone's like, Oh, it must have, it just sounds like it was so easy. And yeah. I look back now and I, I think sometimes I forget the challenges that went along with it, but right. opening, opening a restaurant or a business of any kind, there's so much that goes along with it between licensing, finding a shop, finding a rent that you can afford each month, just dealing with all of the different restrictions and things that you need. I mean, working with the health department and mm -hmm. just so many things that you need to, to physically open. And then you think about, do I need an investor? Do I need this? I actually did a Kickstarter in uh, 2020. I'm sorry, in 2019, I did a Kickstarter. It's okay. kind of like a GoFundMe, but it, Kickstarters are for small businesses. So a lot of people that are trying to launch a product or a business. Mm -hmm. And I raised about $22,000, awesome. which was amazing. And so I said, I'm doing this on my own. I don't need an investor. And I've done it completely on my own with the help of everyone that contributed to that Kickstarter. Yeah. But yeah, it was... It was incredible. And now I look at the business and it's been almost three years and I've gotten into this great routine where I just feel like things are steady and I'm, you know, the business is growing, but I, things are steady in the sense of I'm happy with my location. I'm happy with mm -hmm. where I'm at. Um, I kind of know what my life is going to look like on a weekly basis, but I feel like I'm always looking for opportunities to grow. Yeah. And to just see what's next. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. So what is, um, do you have like a vision for the next steps of the, of the bakery or visions for me, I think are just at every holiday. I like to grow and to be able to do even more, but we've kind of gotten to the point where the shop I'm at, we're kind of at capacity for, you know, we know how much we can do for the holidays. I upgraded to larger fridges and freezers last year, and now they're still completely full at every holiday. And so oh, yeah. we have to close orders. So I think in the next few years, it would be nice to move to a bigger space. Yeah. Um, we also do baking classes. We do cream puffs and French macaroons and cake decorating. And so I've started doing more classes when I can, and cool. those usually sell out within about 24 hours. So I'd love to be able to add more to the calendar because I, the people in the area, obviously everyone really enjoys doing that. Yeah. So, um, I just think, Growing is important for a business, but I don't think you have to feel this obligation to be to become so big or to open up five locations, because for me, my business has really been about uh, focusing on the details and just doing this really incredible job. So people taste these desserts or they see them set up at an event and they're really wild and they want to come back. I don't want to grow so fast and so large that, you know, the quality starts to go out the window mm -hmm. or um, I don't have, you know, the control over what's happening in the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that because it sounds like you're, you're at the point where like you could like really grow it if you yes. wanted to, right. Oh, you yeah. have enough. I could bring on more. I mean, I could bring on more staff. I could go into a bigger shop. I could be paying more rent each month. I yeah. could be doing a lot more. Yes. Yeah. I, people all the time say, well, when are you going to open up on a daily basis? <laughs> I hate to break it to them. That's not the plan. Yeah. That's not how I, I look at the future and I don't see myself opening each day because I think the way I'm running the business is so not only financially smart, but it's just really great. I think for myself and like how I'm running my life as well, yeah. because I get to go in, I get to be artistic. I get to really spend a lot of time doing what I love, but then I also get to step away from the business and travel and do mm. all the things that really fill me up and, you know, bring that inspiration to the business itself. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And I love the idea of just focusing on like the details of the process, right. Mm -hmm. And not, not so much like being worried about the outcome or yes. trying to reach this goal and stuff. I think that's a, something myself that I've been trying to work on mm -hmm. the last couple of years is like, okay, just, just focus on the day-to-day -day stuff and the rest will kind of take care of itself. Well, and we're pressured so much with yeah. social media. I love social media in the sense of it's Instagram is huge for my business. Yeah. So much of my business comes from social media, yeah. but I think we're put in this um, bubble of you have to grow and you have to hustle. And I, that's not my, that's not me. That's not what I'm 
looking Not at that doing. You don't hustle. But, no, I right. do. But I don't like this hustle culture where if you're not working every single day of the week and if yeah. you're not spending every hour of the day thinking about your business, then you must not care about it. Because, I mean, I everyone deserves a break and I think everyone deserves time to recharge. And I think one of the reasons people own businesses is because they can create their own schedule and take the time right. to work towards their passion, but then they can also take that time away too. So, yeah. And I say all this because I'm coming off my summer vacation. <laughs> I'm coming off the slower time I in the summer <laughs> and I'm heading back into the season. And so I'm, I'm preaching this, take some time for yourself because I just did that all summer and now... I'm um, getting back into, uh, before I know it, Thanksgiving and Christmas and the fall season and all of that. So yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, so speaking of like vacations and traveling and stuff, what do you, I got two questions. One is like, what are your, some of your, some of your favorite spots around here? Cause you grew up in the area, yeah. right? Yeah. Palm Harbor. Yeah. Born and so, raised. Awesome. <laughs> Palm Harbor High School class of 06. <laughs> What are some of your favorite spots around here? And then I'm curious just personally, like what are your, what's like one of your favorite places to travel to? All right. Favorite. I knew he was going to ask the favorite local yeah. spots. Okay. So I'm a big coffee girl. I okay. love coffee shops. Yeah. Um, I'd say some of my favorites are escape route in Dunedin. Oh yeah. They have a uh, great coffee and they have like acai bowls and juices yeah. and all that. I really love Haven house, which is a newer coffee shop. It's in downtown safety Harbor. Okay. It's on the second floor. It's above a restaurant, but it's, it's actually the old karma juice bar. And mm. so, um, yeah, Haven house is amazing just a really great spot to go sit and get they have a breakfast burrito that's the bomb so you should go and get that nice. um what other places do i love i really like the ozona pig oh you yeah want good barbecue yeah i think ozona is just the cutest little area i love ozona. it feels yeah. like old florida to me yeah with just like the beautiful trees and the quaint streets and um yeah and i really like to go out to crystal beach and just walk around out there and honeymoon island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I'm a big fan of downtown Dunedin. And actually, Mangoes and Marley is one of my favorites. Yes. And Nina was on the show, yeah. I think, a couple of weeks ago. And so shout out to Nina and Graham. Yeah. But I love their their restaurant. They every time you go in, you feel like you're um, what is it, in Cheers, where everyone knows your name. Yeah. You go in and it's just I always see people I know. Cool. And I think they're great and their food's really awesome. The yeah. tostadas there are one of my favorite things. Yeah. So I went there for lunch um, a couple of weeks ago and for the first time. And it oh, was like, oh, so my good. gosh, this is so good. And you're right. The atmosphere is just it's just a such a relaxing. It's cool so relaxing. Place to hang out. Yeah. Last time I went with a friend, she was in town. We had a glass of wine. We had the bowls, the tostadas. It's yeah. just I love a, a good local spot where you go in and you see people you recognize and whether it's the owners or other friends and mm -hmm. I just, there's something about it. That's just, it's comforting. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. And we got a bunch of those spots around yeah. here too. So it's, it's fun. And then traveling wise, yeah. I mean, I love Paris, which sounds so cliche, but I've been three times. I love it so much because for me, the, the pastries obviously are just unlike anything you'll eat anywhere else. Yeah. So I go there really to get inspired. Okay. But then I really love, um, oh, I went to Iceland, which I will say oh, cool. is amazing. I went almost 10 years ago at this point, but the food was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> when I went 10 years ago, they would serve like puffin and whale and all of this crazy stuff. So I did not go there to get inspired by food. Yeah. But the scenery was breathtaking yeah. and just amazing. Yeah. One of the places we went to recently was Ireland. And oh, I yeah. was like, the scenery and everything is like amazing, uh, incredible. you know, yeah. but the food we like, we didn't enjoy the food as much yeah. as we thought we would have. I'm like, no. Dang. Yeah. And I actually just got back from Nantucket in Cape Cod oh, cool. this summer. And so that was also really beautiful to just be up there and visit some bakeries. And yeah. I always do that on every trip. I have a list of bakeries to visit and it's been cool because I've connected with a lot of other small business owners when I travel. Yeah. And I've actually become friends with quite a few of them where cool. we chat their Instagram and um, my best baking friend. She's actually in Charleston. We've never met, but we have been talking for about three years and nice. we come to each other with different questions or how do I handle this or, you know, different situations, which I think is a really cool thing when you own a business. Mm -hmm. It's hard because your family and your friends may not understand what you're dealing with when you're a business owner. Yeah. But if you find someone else, either in the community or someone through social media, someone that you can just kind of bond with and really ask advice about your business to, I think yeah. that's super helpful to have someone there. Yeah. I think you need that for, for business and life or whatever, just like that support yeah. structure, right? Yeah. And people to, to go to. Yeah. So. Super important. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Well, Jennifer, this has been fun. I appreciate you joining the podcast. Yeah. And it's this good has been to great. Meet you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, and, 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 and let's wrap up with like, how can people, where's your location? And obviously yeah. the wandering with your Instagram. 
Okay. So yeah, so we're in Pinellas Park. Yeah. So just head on to Google, type in Wandering Whisk or go to wanderingwhiskbakeshop.com. Our website is beautiful. Shout out to my brother who <laughs> created my website. And um, yeah, you can go on there if you want to place an order or view our menus. Everything is on the website. If you're getting married, just fill out a wedding inquiry form on the site as well. And then we have pop-ups that will be coming up all throughout the next uh, about five months in August, October, and then through the holiday season. So once again, everything's on our website. And then if you want to follow along on Facebook, just type in Wandering Whisk Bake Shop. And then Instagram, we're at Wandering Whisk. And the uh, pop-ups, you announce those on the website? Yeah. So the pop-ups are always put on the website. So you can always check that out. If you go on our website, you can also sign up for our email newsletter. Perfect. So I always send out emails. And then social media. If you're an Instagram person, head on over and follow our Instagram because I post a ton of content. And if you don't think you're going to be able to make the pop-up, you're going to see all the pictures and then you're going to change your mind and convince your entire family to come. I can guarantee you. You, you definitely <laughs> want to go check it out yeah. for sure. <laughs> well, thanks, Jennifer. Thanks so much, Johnny. Thank you again for listening to another episode of Palm Harbor Local. I really hope you got a ton of value out of today's episode. Now, if you're looking to connect with the guest or just get more information on the episode, then you can check the description below. I'll have all the links in the episode as well as a link back to my website. It's palmharborlocal.com where you can stay up to date on what's going on with the podcast and sign up there to join the locals. Let's get after it this week. And remember, together, we keep Palm Harbor Local. <laughs>